Imagine if civilization was recreated in Ark, with deadly dinosaurs, natural disasters, and a hundred players split across four different biomes. Well today, I launched a public server featuring a colossal map to examine how players would survive in their different civilizations. Various global events will test the endurance and strength of players, such as releasing packs of carnivores, dangerous supply drops with useful loot inside, and eventually an all-out war when the board is full. Each player will also be set in hardcore mode, meaning they only have one life to survive. First, we visit the nomad civilization, who is stranded in a cold tundra, so they immediately started grouping up and searching for food and stone tools to survive. My people, search for the man with the top hat, I shall invite you. Then, we go to the scavenger civilization, where a small group began to form, but they faced difficulties, as most of their players were divided throughout their volcanic island. As I forgot to tell you, that each player in each civilization is spawned spread out completely throughout their land, so it's up to them to tribe up. The Viking civilization began a small camp where they started knocking out a raptor to tame it. I need to make a raptor saddle. The rest of their players had also found a castle on top of a hill in which they started building. Oh, there's the castle, I see it. As the rest of them started heading up, we go to the Celtics. The Celtic civilization had a small group, and their aim was to go and find the rest of the team so they could finally group up. Yeah, so uh, we need to head uh, that way. When they did find the rest of the team, they had triceratopses and parasaurs, but they ran into a big cliff. They instantly jumped off the cliff, and this was for a good reason, as one look behind them and you'll realize why. There was a spino right behind them. They managed to escape just in the distance. Over at the scavengers, progress was going great. They had a few boats, a little crafting area, as well as some baby Andrew Sarkas. Wait, what do we need for an Andrew Sarka saddle? A uh, metal mostly. Their plan was to make as many Andrew Sarka armoured saddles as they can, so they could defend from the other tribes. And it was going pretty well. Over at the Nomad Civilization... I love the Ferenc, you know, it's one of my favourite saves. The Nomads in their cold tundra had also started building a base. But, one of their players from the previous events you might recognise, Valhazark decided to threaten a man and his dodo. This was to show his authority in the tribe. I would say this was pretty smart, as now Valhazark was on his way to be the elected leader for the Nomad Civilization. The Vikings had started building. We should, uh, for the building event, yeah, we should build a little castle in the middle, yeah, and then demo it once the building event's done. One of their players had also tamed a Karka. This was an amazing move by the Vikings, as they now had superior defense against any of the other tribes, as well as all their buildings inside the base. The scavengers had started making progress. Hey guys, we still need people uh, harvesting for stone and thatch. They had most of their players going out and harvesting, and they had set up their base on a defended hill with three entrances. The Celtic civilization, after traveling for about two hours, decided they would set up base in this castle. They had a large wall defense system, as well as they started taming a Rex and a UT. They also had an election podium going, which is pretty nice, seeing as they were ready to elect a leader. Inside their base, they had a wall, a gate, and they had a little bit of a crafting area. However, this was no match for the Vikings, as they appeared to outperform. They had walls, interior castles, lots of defense, and Deinonychus, in which they'd used to bleed. Over at the Nomad Tundra, their base was finished. Inside, they had a small crafting station, as well as upstairs where they had a map, and they actually decided they wanted to move to a fortified castle instead of this base. Are we abandoned in here then? Yeah, we abandoned in. And so they abandoned. They moved up to a snowy castle in the tundra. This was fortified and it only had one bridge to enter. The castle was pretty well defended. The walls were standing tall and it was hard for any other tribe to invade. Inside, they had a small crafting area with some forges to smelt metal. Over at the scavengers, however, they had built a massive base. Yeah, we can make the walls one higher, yeah. So try and keep this, the wood inside. Their base was looking amazing, as it was built purely out of stone, with metal refinements and a beautiful interior. One of the Viking players, Wes, had decided to make a hairdressing shop, where he had cut all of the Vikings' hair. This guy next. <laughs> as well as it was going, there was no time. I told each team they had to perform an election, otherwise things would happen. So y'all can see I got this top hat. I'm already a respectable, I bet respectable man. Yeah, y'all wanna be quiet? That's very disrespectful. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Alright, alright. <laughs> if you vote me for leader, BB will be the uh, war chief, alright? He, he knows- I don't think that. I care. Yo, we said that. Who said it? We said it, bro. Who said, Who said it? it? You're still talking big now, it. huh? 
You still no, don't get it, Mel, huh? Yeah, who wants some? Who wants some? Yeah. They then stood in a line to elect their leader. <laughs> Who's being voted leader then? Who's voted leader? Level 20 where? Uh, Voodoo. Voodoo. Sadly. It seemed Voodoo, a previous player, was elected. Valhazark, a player in the previous events, who was leader every single time, was getting ready to prepare his speech. But in the meantime, we go to the Celtic selection, which was not so good. Okay, so here's the thing, right? We all know what we're up against. We all know that we're up against the massive island of the Vikings, oh. the Nomads. Boo. And I don't know why you guys are all acting like maniacs, but if the massive stone wall is like any indication, we can win this easily. What, yeah. know, what the fuck? Yay! We'll get back to the Celtics later. Over the scavengers, they had some elections planned out. First was a sleeping guy. The uh, sleeping guy's going disabled. first. Yeah, yeah. I'm a disabled, as you see, and I want to be leader because uh, I don't know. I'm blind, and that is it. Uh, vote for Ooh. me for more beaches. You get more beaches if you vote for me. Yeah! Alright! I thought that was an amazing election. Let's go back to the Celtics. Now, someone destroyed their podium, so this guy did it completely on foot. Alright, I'll get my speech right here then. I'm gonna put this nice and short and sweet for you. We are the brick wall of this event, alright? Look at these walls. They're beautiful, alright? And the Vikings, they reek of poo, and we all know that, alright? So we are gonna actually... True. Yeah, let's send them to Crystal Isles, alright boys? Oh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 As all of the Celtics agreed that the Vikings reeked of poo, they decided to vote for the second guy, which was great for the Celtics. Back over at the Scavenger Civilization, a previous player named Jay Miz was ready to speak. Ladies and gentlemen of the volcano, we have gone through so fucking much. We have had easily the hardest start, but we have pulled through. We have the best base, the best teams. We could not be doing any better. I believe that with some more coordination than we already have, we could go even further. We got my vote. Nice. After that speech, more of the scavengers stepped up. I want to do my speech. Please keep right, going. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me have a drink of water real quick. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let me sit down. Hold on. Everyone be quiet. Everyone be quiet. My name is Big Frank the Fifth. I come from five generations of winners and I'll win again. Not just for me, but all of us. We will destroy Val Hazal or where his name is. And the main thing, we came, we saw, we will conquer. They then decided to talk more about Val Hazark. Val Hazark is just a mouthpiece. We're gonna make him suffer. And uh, I'm not actually running for nothing. I'm just dumping for Jay Mids over there. It turned out the third guy Lazarus was elected, even though he was voting for Jay Mids, and their plan was to go and raid Val Hazark once and for all. But the legendary man himself, Val Hazark, decided it was his time to speak. He's been elected leader in all the previous events. My brothers, my sisters in Ark, we are gathered here today to elect our leader. I am the mighty Val Hazark. Many of you have known me, many of you have fought by my side, and many of us have had trials and tribulations. Yeah. And I am the true king to the throne of the veil. Yes. Now, many of the other tribes want me to end. I don't think any of you want that, but if they want me dead, they're not gonna stop until every last one of us are dead and hung from the fucking gates of Mordor. So, we are Why? going to make sure we win this and murk those fuckers until their brains are splattered on our walls. Who's with me? Valhazark's team was ready, and they decided to start properly building in their snowy tundra base. I then said to each of the teams, there was a supply drop on the Swamp Island. This supply drop, however, was a high-level Giga filled with loot. Each team would have to kill this Giga to obtain the loot inside of it. First up was Valhazark's team, the Nomads, 
they came storming in on boats, and their approach was a little bit different to the other teams. <laughs> they decided to run past the Giga multiple times. We used the Rhino, Rhino move. Now, the next decision was to instead of going one by one, the whole team would run away. Y'all are fucked. Oh, why are you not? Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, 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 yeah. so. After a little scare, they decided they were nowhere near strong enough, so they left the island. And it was just in time, because the Vikings had arrived. They tamed a new Giga, and they also brought their Karka. One of the players with a Thykolio had lured this supply drop Giga into the lake, and so the man with the Karka started attacking it and killed it really quickly. The Vikings had now tamed all the armor, weapons, and loot inside of this supply drop. Now, you might be wondering where the Celtics are, and it turns out they're completely dead. I didn't get this on recording, so I'll show you. But what happened is they were riding on their boat on the way to the supply drop, and a whale came up and killed every single one of them. So, let's move on. Instead of going for the supply drop, the scavengers stayed at home and began building on their base. They are two hand-powered turret towers, as well as a lot of tames for defense. They were looking like a really strong force at this point, and they were really not to be reckoned with. Over at the Nomad Civilization, progress was going pretty well. They had a lot of woolly mammoths, a lot of woolly rhinos, and the interior of their base was looking strong and out of stone. But one thing they didn't realize was there was Vikings waiting on their doorstep. These Vikings were covered on a hill. I'm at, I'm at, um, proud of you. 25, 20. They started leaking the Nomad's base cords to their team, and they were ready to attack. Hold the lines of Mordor. <laughs> Valkyrie's team saw them and rushed to get ready. Uh, parachuting into their base. One of their main PVPers, Wes, went into their base with a parachute and spawned a Giga out of the cryopod. Killed one. Yeah, I know. Nice. I'm dead. Oh Wes managed to kill a number of players with the Giga, and then he went in straight for the teams. The mammoths and the rhinos surprisingly managed to push the Giga back a lot. Then they managed to rage it and kick off Wes from the team. They raged the Giga. After raging the Giga, Wes was demounted and began to run and get to safety. The Giga, however, fell off the cliff, making it nearly unreachable. So, Wes's best bet was to sit and hide, waiting for his Viking team. Now, we move over to the Viking base, where the scavengers had planned a raid, giving the Vikings a taste of their own medicine. Watch my back, watch my back. The Vikings were pretty unaware of this raid, however, one member saw it, and they instantly began calling in their tribe. The scavengers began to blow up the door and move in. Go, 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 go! They attacked with Andrew Sarkers. I killed one. And they started killing left and right. Move, 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 yeah, move. Just... Don't go in there, don't go in there. Even after killing a load of the Viking Stylos, the scavengers started to realize they were actually outnumbered. Eventually, after battling to the death, they had to move out with some of their team members lost. Back over at the Nomads, it was time for round two. The Vikings blew up the door and went straight in with the Karka. I am Valhazak, and you shall not pass. Valhazak, like the hero he is, went out on his mammoth and tried to kill the Giga all by himself. But he was not strong enough. And the story ends. Past. After the Vikings successfully killed Valhazak, the Nomads now had no organization. So the Vikings charged in. The Kakra, led by one of the players, Krenny, went straight in for the Mammoths. But unfortunately, this is what happened. Mammoth? It was killed by a Mammoth? <laughs> Come on! The Kaka was killed by a Mammoth, but Wes was still in there. I'm still at their base, raiding it. Wes, with the Giga, managed to kill every single one of the Nomads and all their tames. The Nomads was gone. Back over at the Vikings, Wes and his group finally teamed up back at the base to prepare for the next raid. They knew the scavengers were hungry, and they were getting ready for the second attack. So, in came the scavengers. Even though their numbers were low, they weren't happy, so they went straight in to attack the Vikings' legendary base. Scavengers went straight to the door and got their grenades out, went for the same entrance they went for last time. The front gate just got blown, the front gate just got blown. However, the Vikings were ready. We're getting raided. <laughs> The Vikings thought it was quite funny, as they were way more prepared than the scavengers had thought. So they began shooting with their crossbows and bows to the scavengers Andrew Sarkers, and they were doing a decent amount of damage. But when the scavengers eventually did break in, they brought a Rex with them, and the Rex inside the Vikings base was not welcome. And so the Vikings immediate response was to gather all the teams and finish off this scavenger Rex along with the players on top of it. The last scavenger in this raid went upstairs to try and kill some of the Vikings, but he got bowled. Yeah, help me please, I'm dying. 
Oh, I killed one. Nice. Ah. <laughs> the Vikings had killed all the scavengers in this raid. However, there were still scavengers at the base. And so, there were only two teams left, the Vikings and the scavengers. The scavengers knew the raid was coming, so they got prepared. And in came the Vikings. They had their brontosaurus with an entire artillery on top. In they came. The Vikings charged in with two Rexes as well as their brontosauruses behind them. They managed to kill a few of the scavengers and Chusakas. No, I'm back. Oh my god, I'm dead. I just got bullied. And the Vikings were doing really well. However, what they didn't realize was inside the scavengers base was a bunch of Velonosaurs waiting to kill. The Vikings were lured to the top of the base where the last scavenger player was inside waiting for the raid. And so in the Vikings came with their pistols trying to kill these Velonosaurs. But it wasn't working. The Vikings were getting absolutely destroyed by these Velos. The last scavenger got on top of a Velo and started attacking all of these Vikings. After many deaths, there were two Vikings left, and so in they went. They had their two terror birds, but the Velos were too strong. They were shooting all these terror birds and ended up killing this Viking. This meant there was one player left. He was killed by the Velonosaur. And so, the scavengers had won this event. Well, we didn't get Valhazar, but no matter. We did our best. We had fun and we won this thing anyway. Be sure to join the Discord and bio if you would like to play in these events in future. And subscribe.